in the Saddle Shoulder Sweater Workshop. So today we are actually going to be talking about something that is not specific to saddle shoulder sweaters, but uh, is often used with them in yield modern times, uh, and that is the seamless set-in sleeve. Um, while there, you can use other styles of sleeves with a saddle shoulder, you can do a drop shoulder. Um, are there other kinds you might do? I don't know, maybe, maybe somebody's doing it, but uh, for the most part, saddle shoulders uh, will have a set-in sleeve, and these days, seamless set-in sleeves are all the rage, and I personally love them because sewing sleeves into an armhole, um, whether you're uh, a knitter or a sewist, is terrible. It's uh, just a real pain in the butt. Um, and the seamless set-in sleeve just makes a really nice, neat, tidy uh, sleeve join here with no sewing required. So today I'm going to be showing you how that is done. It is basically a series of short rows to create fabric up here to, you know, kind of wrap around this part of your shoulder um, and then decreasing fabric until you get to the arm, underarm because of course you don't want a lot of extra fabric uh, in this part of the sweater, but you do need more fabric to cover uh, what are these? Deltoids? Um, and you know, so this cur curves out more and needs more space than the, the lower part of your arm until you get to the underarm. So, um, this is a process that is done with short rows. Um, if short rows have given you trouble before, you'll probably be happy to know that in this case, you do not need to pick up your wraps and work them together with your stitches. Your wraps are just left the way they are. Um, I think for most people that is the trickiest part of short rows and you don't have to worry about that. So that is some good news. So without further ado, let us go ahead and start working on our seamless set in sleeves for our saddle shoulders. Okay, let's embark on the last bit of our saddle shoulder sweater journey, which is the sleeves. So as I said, um, this is a little bit of a bonus video because not all saddle shoulder sweaters will be constructed this way. But uh, this one that I am currently working on is, this older one is, uh, and uh, the seamless set and sleeve has become quite popular. So although your saddle shoulder may not be done this way, if it is, uh, I think this will come in handy. So for the seamless set in sleeve, what we do is pick up stitches around the armhole of our sweater. So you can see here and here uh, at, a, at a particular rate in different sections uh, to construct the fabric that goes over the shoulder and upper arm. Uh, I discussed in the previous video why we can't just pick up you know, three stitches for every four rows and knit in a tube, we need to create a fabric that is going to stretch around the armhole up here, get narrower as we approach the bottom of the armhole, and also have some uh, three-dimensional kind of qualities. Because of course the top the shoulder and top part of your arm uh, are not flat, they curve outward. So uh, before I start, um, I want to suggest that if this is something that interests you, particularly if you are interested in learning how to adapt existing patterns for seamless set and sleeves, um, I highly recommend Elizabeth Doherty's book, Top Down Reimagining Set and Sleeves. So that is what I used to learn how to do this. Uh, and it walks you through all of the numbers and percentages and things. Um, so if that's something that interests you, absolutely recommend that book. And I will put a link to it uh, in the description box down below. So basically what it is, is you're going to pick up almost all your stitches in this area because you need more fabric in this part of the arm. As you work down the arm, you're going to pick up from, you know, kind of here down to the armhole, you're going to pick up about half. So however many rows you have, 
uh, it'll pick up about half as many stitches. And then under the arm, you pick up as many stitches as you cast on, of course. Then you're gonna work a series of short rows all the way until about, let's see, here-ish. And it'll just be one past, wrap and turn, one past the last one, wrap and turn. So you create this fabric up here. And then as you get down here, we just don't, we have to pick up stitches here, otherwise we'd have gaps, but we don't need as much fabric under the arm. So then you will start working short row decreases, which involve um, wrapping two stitches and working them together. So we're gonna decrease out some extra fabric under the arm that we don't want uh, until we get to the end when everything joins in the round and then we should have the correct number of stitches for our upper arm. So as I said, the exact numbers um, are very dependent on your gauge and your pattern. Um, this percentage system that um, Elizabeth has worked out. So I highly recommend that book, but I will show you how we're gonna do it on the, my sweater in progress. All right, so here we have uh, my sweater yoke. Uh, as I said, I decided to work a little bit of the body, but then put things on hold so we could do the sleeves now and finish up this video series. Um, something to bear in mind as you do this, your gauge here, and particularly for me, is um, worked flat. And in this case, it is uh, cabled stitches, which uh, is a tighter gauge. When you go to work in the round here, especially if you're going, say, stockinette in the round, whereas all of this was cabled, your gauge is probably going to change and you need to either check your pattern and see if it states uh, a different gauge for the arms, for the sleeves, uh, or you may need to just double check your gauge and see what the difference is uh, between knitting in the round and knitting flat. I'm really annoyed because something wonky is happening here. I think there was a knot in my yarn. Right. Neither here nor there. So if you are doing a saddle shoulder sweater, um, you have left, possibly, at least for this pattern I have, you have left your um, saddle stitches at the armhole edge on, um, you have left your live stitches on a holder so this is going to be your initial pickup. Now for larger sizes, you may need to pick up a couple of extra on either side to be your initial pickup to match the correct number uh, that of course would, should be given to you in your pattern or should be given um, from your formula. So in this case, for this particular sweater design, the smaller sizes, what's called the upper cap pickup matches the um, live saddle shoulder stitches. For some of the larger sizes, I think the first four or five sizes it matches. For some of the larger sizes, there are a couple of extra stitches to pick up to equal that what is called the upper cap. So after you have picked up what we're going to call the upper cap stitches, you are going to put a marker. And then you're going to pick up what we're gonna call the mid cap. So the exact number of stitches you pick up here will be specified in your pattern or through your formula, but it's going to be about 50% of the rows that you have worked from here down to where you cast on for the underarm. So however many rows this is, it's going to be about half of that. In my case, I need to pick up 19 stitches. I wanna pick up this first stitch really close to the saddle so I don't get a gap there. And then after that, it won't matter quite so much, but I really want to make sure we don't end up with a gap on either side of the saddle. Stitches, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. All right, one, two. Now, if 
you are used to picking up three stitches for every four rows or something along those lines um, when you're knitting button bands and things you might think oh my gosh this is not enough stitches because you're not picking up 75% you're picking up 50% that's okay don't worry about it all right after you pick up your mid cap stitches you're gonna put another marker you're gonna pick up an equal number of stitches you're gonna pick up an equal number of stitches as you cast on under the arm uh, so in my case it's 10 stitches <laughs> another marker and pick up the same number of stitches you did on the opposite side so in my case 19 and again you really want to get that last stitch nice and close to your saddle here so you don't end up with any gaps so once you have picked up your stitches, you will be ready to start working the short rows. Um, I find it helpful to do magic loop, so that is what I'm doing. Uh, depending on your size of your garment, you may be able to use a 16 inch circular needle, perhaps you prefer DPNs, maybe even two circular needles, whatever your preference is. Um, for working a smaller circumference in the round, that you can do for this process. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so now that we have picked up all the stitches around our armhole, we're gonna start working our short rows. And the way this is done is we're gonna start by allowing there to be more fabric. So we're going to wrap a stitch, go back, come back, knit that stitch, knit one, then wrap the next stitch. We'll do that a few times. Then we put them closer together. So we're wrapping every stitch. And then as we get down toward the bottom is when we start working the decrease short rows where we're wrapping two stitches together. So this uh, rate of short rows will create more fabric here um, at the top of the arm that has to where it curves around the shoulder and then less and less as we get down to the underarm. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the other thing that you're going to be doing at the same time is either maintaining or establishing a stitch pattern. Um, so what I am doing for start, for starters, to start, um, I'm going to work my first seven stitches through in stockinette. I'm going to put a marker because I'm going to be maintaining some of this twisted rib down my sleeve and I don't want to uh, forget to do it. The other thing though is that I also don't want to mix those markers up. So that is something um, if you are maintaining a stitch pattern and need uh, extra markers you might consider using a different color or style. Okay so there's the ribbing I'm going to maintain. Then I'm going to knit to this first marker, which again marks what we're calling the upper cap of our sleeve. I am going to remove the marker and then wrap and turn the next stitch. And then return to work a wrong side row. So I'm going to work back. Again, still in stockinette for now. I'm eventually going to be adding a textured uh, a stitch pattern, but I don't need to start it just yet. Okay, um, and I'm gonna be working my twisted rib while we work the short rows flat, and then we'll switch to working it in the round. All right. Knit to the other upper cap marker, or purl to the other upper cap marker. And again, this is a little, there's kind of a lot going on at first, so you may need to keep kind of moving your needles around a bit to accommodate. So 
is you're working technically in the round, but you're doing the back and forth short rows. All right, so now I'm going to wrap and turn the next stitch. And now we're on the right side again. So this time, I'm gonna work back to my last wrapped stitch. Still working in whatever stitch pattern I might be working in. Okay, so here's my last wrapped stitch. I do not need to pick up the wrap and work it with this stitch because this is right along that um, armhole pickup edge, it is not necessary. So if picking up the wrap is something that gives you uh, a little pause, you don't have to worry about it. So I'm just gonna knit that wrapped stitch, then I'm gonna knit the next stitch, I'm gonna tighten up that, and then I'm gonna wrap the next stitch after that. And we turn. And we're gonna, I'm gonna continue doing this leaving one stitch in between my wrapped stitches uh, until I am, let's say, a third of the way down my armhole. So your pattern will, if you are working with a pattern, will specify how long you're, you're doing these uh, uh, leaving one space in between your wrapped stitches, of course. Uh, if you are working on your own, you basically are going to keep doing this uh, through the broadest part of the shoulder. And that will vary depending on your size. So you will do it, of course, Fewer times for a smaller size and um, more times for a larger size. Here's my last wrap stitch. I'm just gonna purl it. I'm gonna purl the next stitch and then I'm gonna wrap the stitch after that. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna keep going like that. And when we're ready to make a change, I'll be back. Okay, so now that we have shaped the broadest part of our sleeve that's going to go around the top of the shoulder, we're going to speed up the short rows. So now instead of leaving a stitch in between our wrapped stitches, we don't. We just wrap the very next stitch. This is not particularly interesting as it doesn't look a whole lot different than what I was already doing. So I'm not going to show it to you, but I did want to leave a comment in here and let you know that that is what's happening. Uh, and that is what we will be doing in my case until there are six stitches left before the underarm stitches. So basically four stitches uh, on either side that are going to be wrapped with nothing, no stitch in between. Then when we get to the last batch of stitches before the underarm, that is where we are going to do the decrease short rows and I will put a video in here of that. Okay, we are back. We have worked across the upper cap. You can see that there's more fabric here, so it will curve around your shoulder. Now we've started decreasing the amount of fabric because this part of our arm um, is not as broad. And now we are going to start working the decrease short rows. I'm just gonna demonstrate this part really quickly. So what I'm going to do now I've knit the previously wrapped stitch. Normally I, I would wrap the next stitch, but instead I'm gonna wrap the next two stitches. So just like it sounds, I'm gonna slip two stitches, wrap, slip them back, and then turn. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. <laughs> previously wrapped stitch on this side and then again slip the next two and then slip them back and turn. Now <laughs> when we get back 
to those two stitches that we wrapped together. We're just going to knit them together. And I'm not on a pattern row, so this should go <laughs> relatively quickly and smoothly. <laughs> stitches that were wrapped together we still have no need to um, to pick up wraps so we just knit them together and then wrap the next two stitches and we're going to continue to work this way until we get to those stitches that are marked on the armhole okay we're ready for our last short row step so I'm going to knit to my two stitches that are wrapped together. I am going to knit them together. Then I'm going to remove this marker because this is uh, marking the uh, underarm cast on stitches. I'm going to wrap the next stitch. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side and that is the last short row. to purl my two stitches that are wrapped together, remove my marker, wrap one more stitch, and that was the last short row. So now what we're going to do is to work back in pattern, if you have one, to the middle of our underarm cast on stitches, as that is now going to be the beginning of our round. <music> stitch that was the first stitch from the underarm you're going to work that as normal and then you're going to keep going and work across um, let's see here I am messing up the stitch pattern <laughs> you're going to keep going you're going to work across um, half your underarm stitches and then you are going to mark the new beginning of your round um, Depending on how you were doing this, you might want to put a marker there. If you're using a uh, magic loop, you don't really need to. So now you can see we have worked the top of our sleeve. We've got plenty of fabric to curve around over the top of the shoulder. So it will bend down this way. And now your sleeve is going to be worked just like any other sleeve that is worked uh, in the round from the top down. So you're just going to knit in a straight tube, maintaining whatever stitch pattern uh, you have. And that is the basics of the seamless set and sleeve. So I'll remind you one last time, uh, if this is something you're interested in learning how to do to adapt patterns yourself, I really recommend Elizabeth Doherty's book, Top Down, Reimagining Set and Sleeves. Um, the other thing I'll remind you of is that this will soon be a sweater pattern that you can purchase. So if you want more information about that, uh, make sure you sign up for my newsletter so you don't miss it when it is published. The rest of the sweater is worked just like any other top-down sweater um, in that there's a body and there are sleeves and obviously there are some patterns I have going on here and there's a button band. Uh, but all of that is... Um, just how all sweaters are done has nothing to do with the saddle shoulder, which was the point of this workshop series. Uh, one last thing I am going to do on this pattern is add pockets. If that's something you're interested in seeing a tutorial on, leave a comment in the description box down below and I'll see about creating one for that as well. But otherwise, we have gone through the saddle shoulder uh, process, working a saddle shoulder sweater from the top down, including the seamless set in sleeve, and you are all set. Thank you.